When they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. Oh, unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of the boy, and he was healed from that moment. Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and asked, Why couldn't we drive it out? He replied, Because you have so little faith. I tell you the truth. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible. How many of you are uh, carrying a King James Bible and said to yourself, hey, you missed the word? Anybody? No King James Bible? So in King James, uh, there's a 21st verse. It says, this kind does not come out except by prayer and fasting. And for some reason, the NIV leaves that verse out. Um, I want to tell you what my goal is today. Make it very simple. It's twofold. Know what I'm going, where I'm going. One is, I want to convince you, if you aren't already, that God wants you to be a fossil. Okay? And secondly, that if you agree to be a fossil for God, the most important part is to make sure you are connected. Now, this fossil is absolutely useless like this, isn't it? It's no good. I, mean, I can turn it, nothing's going to happen. The only way this faucet is of any use is if I connect it to some pipes that are connected to a water source so that it can be used. Sitting like this, it is absolutely useless. It's pretty, it's made of copper, costing $5.69 in value. Um, but it's really useless. So I'm going to set it here just so it's in front of you while I'm talking. Okay. Uh, T. E. Elliot, who's, uh, excuse me, T. E. Lawrence, also known as Lawrence of Arabia, was uh, a go-between between some of the Arab sheiks and England during World War II. And after the war was over, he invited those sheiks to come to England. He hosted them there for a while to show his gratitude. And then he told them, uh, hey, anything you want as a souvenir to take back with you. And uh, I will purchase it for you to uh, show my appreciation the way you helped me through the war. So they took him into his, uh, their hotel room, and they went into the bathroom, and they went over to the sink, and they pointed to the faucet. They said, we want to take these back with us. They did not understand that in order for the faucet to be any good, there were pipes in the walls connected to a water source, and everything that goes with getting water into that bathroom. They thought that somehow there was something magic in the faucet that gave the water, and they wanted to take that back into the desert with them. In this story that happened with Jesus' followers and trying to rescue this young man from demonic possession, something was missing. And what was missing is they were trying to act like Jesus without being connected to Jesus. They were just imitating. They were being like this. You know, if I, if I have a faucet, it looks like this. It doesn't matter if it's connected. Water will come out. That's the mistake they made. Now, I told you my, my second part of my goal is connect, convince you to be connected and I want to do away with some of the excuses that you might have why you can't be a faucet for Jesus. Okay, for example, ever hear of Moses? Well, Moses used the excuse that he stuttered. God, you can't use me because I stutter. God said, I don't care if you stutter. I can use you anyway. They tried to put David into some armor that didn't fit. God used him anyway. 
Paul rejected John Mark, but God used John Mark anyway. God, you can't use me. I've got, you know, I got these physical problems. I, I got a bad stomach. You can't use me. Well, Timothy had a home service. Lord, I don't have the right kind of training for you to be using me. Well, the only training Amos had was in the school of fig tree pruning. Lord, you know, I've got a bad reputation for many, many years. I just had a hard time telling the truth. Oh, you were like Jacob. He was a liar. David had an affair. Solomon was too rich. Lord, I've had my time. I've had my time. It's time for the younger folks to take over, Lord. I'm just too old. Well, that could have been Abraham's excuse. Or David, who was too young. Peter was a coward and afraid of death. Speaking of death, you know, Lazarus probably had the biggest problem of all. He was dead. But God used him anyway. John was self-righteous, but God used him. Lord, you know, I just haven't been the same since my husband died. You can't use me. Well, Naomi was a widow. God used her. We have any, don't raise your hand, any murderers in here? Well, Paul, for God used uh, Paul the murderer. He also used Moses who was a murderer. Jonah ran from God, but God used him anyway. Miriam was a gossip. Thomas and Gideon were both doubters. Jeremiah was a bullfrog. Just checking to see if you're listening. Actually, he was depressed and suicidal. Elijah was burned out. Martha was a quarry ward. Mary may have been lazy. Samson had long hair. Noah was a drunk. And that's not all. And did I mention that Moses had a short fuse? You see, God doesn't require a job in the movie because God's not like our boss. God's more like our dad. God's not looking to make money off of us. He's not running a business for financial gain or loss. He's not prejudiced. He's not partial. He's not judging or grudging. He's not blind to what we need. And for some reason, he has decided to use us not because of us, but in spite of us. Anybody who has an excuse why God can't use you, <coughs> God has a way that he can if you will volunteer to be possible. And that simply means God is providing the blessing that he wants you to use and you just say, Lord, here I am. Open it up. Use me any way you want to. Now, I don't know who said this. I wish I did. Uh, I actually searched for the author of this quote. I couldn't find it. Couldn't find it. That's better. But I concur to this. I say amen to this. I was never of any use to God until I learned that he never intended for me to be of great. I was never of any use to God. So I learned that he never intended for me to be the great man. It would be easy, wouldn't it? To list all my failures and all the ways that I don't measure up and all the things that I haven't accomplished and say, you know, I'm not a very great man. But when I realized God didn't intend for me to be a great man, he just intended for me to be a faucet and be a source of his blessing and stay connected to him, everything changes. So if God doesn't intend for me to be a great man, what does he intend? Well, John 7, 38 says, Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow through him. So he wants me to be a conduit to let the streams flow. You know, God can have all the pipes in place and the pump hooked up and ready to pour out his blessings and everything all set except somebody at the end. Some faucet. Somebody will be used with him. When Elijah was performing miracles for the prophet's widow, something happened. Second Kings 4, 6 says this. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. And he replied, there are none left. And the oil stopped flowing. When there was no vessel, the blessing stopped. The oil stopped. And that concept has not changed. God still 
Now, I always hesitate to use the word, words God needs, okay? He's God. He doesn't need anything. So I want to use the word need like this. In order for God to do things the way God wants to, He does need us. He needs people to step up and say, I'll be a false. He's chosen to use us as vessels to bless others. But if we're not connected, we're about as useful as this. It's very pretty, looks nice, it's red handle, but it's absolutely useless the way it is. Now these guys, when they went and tried to uh, deliver this boy from the demons, imagine, imagine the conversation. Okay, we've seen Jesus do this a lot of times, so we're gonna we're gonna talk like Jesus. We're going to use the same hand motion as Jesus. We're going to do everything like Jesus because we've seen him do it. And they missed the point. And the church makes this mistake sometimes. When I say the church, I mean in general, the Christian church. Sometimes we spend more time trying to get people to act like Jesus and not enough time emphasizing we need to be connected to Jesus. Because you can come up with a whole bunch of people who act a certain way, but have no connection to him. Want to, want to, act, want to uh, act like Jesus? Talk like this. Say these kinds of things. Do these kinds of things. Make sure you go to church every week. Be like Jesus. Act like him. And that's the point Jesus was making to this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. If you had the faith of a mustard seed. You know, I could, I could study the uh, way certain preachers and have huge churches of 10,000 people. I could study the way they talk and uh, the jokes they tell and the stories they tell and the kinds of things they do and try and act like them. And that's not what God called me to do. He called me to be myself, but stay connected to him. You know, I could march back and forth and say all the right words, and it wouldn't matter. My most important thing is to connect, be connected to Jesus, not act like him, but more importantly to stay connected to him. I, I had a uh, wonderful pastor when I was in high school and college. I got called, I got saved at age 15 in September. By January of 1971, by January 1st of 1972, I was already feeling the, the urge, you know, the unction to become a preacher. And so at a very impressionable age, having had a man who was instrumental in leading me to Christ die, Reverend Bob Parker, and a new pastor come, uh, Bob Williams, uh, one of the things I had in my head was, I need to act like Pastor Bob Williams. Now, in order to do that, he had some pretty strict rules on his life that he himself imposed. He had no TV in his house. He only wore black suits and a white shirt. He wore no necktie. Things all buttoned up like this. He would go the lawn in his black suit, his white shirt, all buttoned up, his dress shoes. But he was dressed like that all the time. I realized something. God didn't call me to act like my pastor. He called me to be connected to him and act like myself. Now, I'm very thankful that in all my years I've never seen anybody try to act like me. Don't. <laughs> okay? Now, here's the thing. This applies to my life and to yours more than just my role as being a preacher. I can't be the husband God wants me to be without being connected to Jesus. I had the age of raising my children, but when I was at that age, I could not be the father God wanted me to be without being connected to Jesus. I can't, in this stage of my life, I can't be the grandfather. I can't be the uncle. I can't be the neighbor. I can't be anything that God wants me to be without being connected to Jesus. And, and trust me, I know what it's like to have every 
faucet. If the connection behind it becomes broken, nobody will notice. I don't say bad words. I don't go places I shouldn't go. I go to church. I look good. I look just the same. This is what is it what God's asking you to do. He's asking you to be connected. Now, I just want to give you just a couple more verses. Romans 7, 18. Understand, I'm just the faucet. Okay? He is supplies the blessings to come through me. I know that nothing good lives in me, that in my sinful nature, for I have a desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. I'm just a vessel. I can't preach well enough, sing well enough. I can't duplicate what only God can do. He has asked me, above and beyond everything else, to stay connected to Him. And so I want to finish this morning with this question for you, this challenge. Is this you? Without connection. Maybe you had one at one time. Maybe it's not clogged up. Maybe it's broken. You know, nobody notices. You still look the same, talk the same. Or are you connected? I want to pray before we sing the final hymn. And I just want to ask you this. If you would like me to remember you, as I pray, that you would be sure that connection is good. And I want you to just stand up. Don't stand up the same. This first part is just stand up where you are and say, Pastor, I need to, I need to make sure the connection is good. I'll do that right now before I pray. I'll give you a second. I'm going to pray that prayer for you. Please stand. Lord, I don't want to just look good. I don't want to just look like a Christian. I don't want to just act like Jesus. I want to be connected to you. That is most important. I pray that for myself and all those who want the same thing in Christ's name.